Okay, so I'm like, we're here again. Uh, today is October 20, uh, 25th, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunday, we are here for another study session uh, of our Quran study group that we meet every so often. Uh, we're again grateful to uh, the sister uh, Kalila, Carolyn, however she likes to be known, for, for providing us with her residence to uh, have this uh, group study. And we thank everybody who made the sacrifice to come out. Uh, you might notice that uh, I'm not wearing a face mask. I came in with a mask. Everybody came in with a mask. Everybody's temperature was taken. We're sitting certain distance apart. And everybody here is adults. And we have decided either we wear a mask or we don't. And we have already agreed that if we happen to drop dead today, what a wonderful dropping dead in the cause of a law to speak about a law, even though we're not trying to be suicidal. Uh, we have agreed to discuss the subject of Salah. We want to relook at the position of Salah, and I asked uh, the study group to uh, to look at uh, a video by our good brother Shuaib Abdullahi. Now, I want to make something clear. This is not a study to indict. Brother Shuaib Abdullahi or any other Quran follower who has a position about Salah that might slightly differ from the position that this group adheres to, which is we don't do any Salah here. At least nobody here does any kind of Salah, which we think is a ritual, and there's no details for doing that Salah in the Quran, and so we don't do it. And if we find clarification that we should do it, I'm sure everybody here will be glad to do it. No, this is not an indictment or an argument or something concerning our good brother Shuei, who does what he does, and we appreciate his contribution to whatever it is that he does to further the truth of this Quran position. What we want to do is because the people outside of the Quran, the Sunnis who follow Hadith and so forth, are saying that anybody who follows this Quran alone position, and whether they're making three salahs or no salahs, they're all wrong. So we have that problem with them. Then when we have brothers within the Quran followers, followers uh, who follows only the Quran, uh, when we have people within that forum also saying that certain people within the forum are wrong because they don't believe it's a ritual, they don't think it should be three, they don't believe uh, physical prostration, they don't believe this and that, they don't know the origin of the words or whatever, well then we have another problem in fighting. So I suggested that look, we best to know what we're talking about, all of us, the people outside who follow five salah in the Sunni tradition, the people who follow three, the people who follow none, Everybody better know what they're talking about and better have good reason and good argument to support what they do. So that ha having been the case, I suggested that we in this group rethink and look at the position that some of the people have taken, especially the people within the Quran uh, group, people who follow the Quran alone, uh, and, and make sure that we all uh, understand what we're talking about. So for that reason, I asked them to look at that video, and then we're going to discuss it. It has nothing to do with the person who uh, presented the video. It's the arguments that are being presented, and that's all we're talking about. And I again made it clear uh, that if anybody looks into the Quran and finds an understanding regarding something, whatever it is that they do, and they, that's their reasoning, that's their understanding based on what they see from the Quran, even if somebody else looks in that same Quran and comes up with a different understanding or different reasoning, Allah will, and they're sincere, as long as they live, Allah will continue to guide them to the truth. If they happen to die before they get further clarification, Allah will hold them accountable, and I feel that he will grant them permission, grant them mercy, because they stayed within the book and they did the best they could with their reasoning faculty to understand the truth. So Allah says, I will make clear to you that wherein you differ. That means you will differ and you will need to be clarified on the day of judgment. And as long as you stayed in the book, you didn't hop outside and get somebody else's opinion or understanding or whatever, 
I think that you're good. So that being said, let's take a look at uh, this situation as it was uh, uh, presented in the video by our good brother, Shuei. Now, it was something else I was gonna say. I, I should have said it at the time. I think it slipped my mind. But anyway, maybe it'll come back to me and I'll say it. Anyway, the basic uh, situation concerned uh, the origin of the word Salah. What is the origin of the word Salah? As some people say, the word stems from the verb sad, sad, lamb, wow, sad, lamb, wow. And some people say it stems from the verb, verb uh, sad, lamb, yeah. Salah, Salah. <coughs> So, Sudlam, and then the word uh, Sujud, uh, Sajja, is a uh, been concerned also. So, now our brother Shue, when you looked at his video, the homework uh, as, as assigned to you, uh, he spoke about the meaning of the word Salat. He was concerned with that. What was the word Salat? Uh, what was the, pre uh, the Salat of previous prophets? He wanted to know what was the Salat of the previous prophets. So he was concerned with that. Uh, he spoke about uh, chapter 19, verse 58 or 59, with the words to Jude. And he said, when the eyes are recited to them, then he went on to speak about what was the case regarding that. And he spoke about the Salah as being a liturgy or a ritual. The Salah is a ritual. And he spoke from chapter 5, verse 6. Uh, I believe that was the verse he gave, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I think he spoke about chapter 4, verse 1 or 2. Uh, saloon and As-Salawat. Now, okay, so we're going to look at some of those things uh, as we go through them. Now, note, I have a note here. There's no guidance in the Quran detailing an individual Salah. There's no guidance in the Quran for an individual salah. For an individual person to stand up and make an individual salah, there's no details for that individual salah nowhere in the Quran. <clears throat> the entity that they call individual salah is in fact dua, which is a supplication. Not the Quranic salah which is established. The Quranic Salah is established. Akimu or Akimus, Akimi or Akimu Salah is established. But the individual Salah that they're talking about is what would be called Dua. If you translate the word Salah as prayer, then Dua would be the individual prayer, which you don't have to have any special language or any special direction, or any human being can make Dua, make their. Uh, that prayer, that supplication. The Quranic narration of Zechariah, which our brother Shuei mentioned, the Quranic narration of Zechariah is quoted as an example of individual salah in chapter 3, verse 37. Zechariah supplicated to his Lord and said, My Lord. And we'll, talk, we'll come back that, to that later on. So he made a supplication. Now, when I want to dismantle, dismantle this idea of a Salah being a ritual and sujud being a physical prostration and the idea of reciting the Quran back to Allah when it was sent down to you for the, to be recited to the people for guidance, uh, when I want to dismantle that, uh, I have to first deal with the definition of Salah. And now we note that our good brother, Shuaib, and I, I don't want to keep mentioning his name because it's not against him, but I'm just saying that because we're talking about the video that he produced and that he <coughs> spoke about. But it's nothing personal against Shuaib, and uh, so I, I don't think I need to keep saying his name. Uh, I respect brother, and I respect the work that he does, and I respect the work of every individual who seeks to understand and communicate to others this Quran as it is. So, um, just looking at the arguments, and Allah says to argue, come together and to argue and to reason. So, if I'm looking at the definition of Salah, I'm gonna look first at chapter 75, 
verse 31 and 32. Now, I noticed that in the video, um, now, uh, chapter 96, verse 10 was given. Chapter 96, verse 10 was given. But 7531, which I prefer to use first, I'll use them both, but I prefer to go to 7531 first because right back to back you have the, the contrast to Salah. What is contrasted with Salah, uh, Salah, and Wallah, you see? So, but let's take a look at 96.10 first and see what was happening there. So 96.10, and we'll start uh, a little higher. Uh, we'll start at verse 8 anyway. It says, Surely to thy Lord is the, is the return. Hast thou seen him who forbids, forbids, uh, a servant when he prays, when he prays, and there the word is salah, sud lamb wow, sud lamb lamb wow. So sud lamb wow, I guess that would be the verb, the root that we'd be using here. Have you seen a servant, him who forbids a servant when he prays? See if thou if he is on the right way, if he's upon al huda, he's on al huda. Or he enjoins the observance of duty, seest thou if he de denies and turns away. So actually this, this, this uh, surah and these verses are giving the contrast the same thing. The one is the word salah, and the one the opposite is tawalla. So he's kadaba to and, and tawalla. He's doing the salah. And then he's doing denying and turning away. So that was the one that was given. But however, in the video, 75, 31, and 32 was not given. And those, I'm saying it's not that much different, but since that was there, it should have been given as well. And so I'm going to give that one as my definition for uh, the Salah. How does the law define what Salah is? And there it says, Starting at verse 30, to thy Lord on that day is the is the driving. So he accepted, so he accepted not the truth, nor did he pray. They have here. He didn't accept the truth, nor did he pray, but he denied the truth and turned back. So here the word is he did not accept, nor did he salah. Salah. The same verse, sad lamb, yeah. Salah. He denied the truth. He didn't, he, the truthful speech, he did not, somebody was speaking, the word is sadaka. So that truth there is truthful speech, it's not al haq It's the person who's speaking truthfully, truthfully about al haq about the truth. So the person came speaking truthfully about the truth, and he denied it. And uh, he, he, did, he did, instead of following it and committing himself to it, he denied it and called it a lie, and turned away. He called the truth a lie, and he turned away. Tawalla. So if you look at the verb, sadla, sad lamb ya, yeah, or sad lamb wow, both are going to give you the same definition. Sad lamb ya, yeah, you see, it, and, and I noticed that in the video it was said that this word sad lamb ya yeah, means to roast. So if you look at the, at, at the term uh, roasting, when you roast something, and some people don't want to look outside of the Quran for dictionary terms, but if you do look, it's going to mean roast. So if you say roast, well, it's going to say roast also. So it means like if you're doing, if you're barbecuing something and you have a flame and you're turning the barbecue, it's turn, you're turning the, the item that you're roasting towards the fire. You're turning it always towards the fire. You're turning it, the fire is here, and you're turning it towards the fire. So every all around the whole thing, it gets cooked as it turns, as it rotates. You can't leave it in one place and let it just burn. So you're rotating it so it evenly cooks, and you're turning it towards. So it means turn towards. So if you look at sud lamb ya, yeah, it means to roast, to turn towards. If you look at sud lamb wow, it means to turn towards, to follow, to commit, to follow, to be uh, 
turn closely to something. So now, now uh, if you look at the dictionary word, and I'm going to use it because even though some people don't like to look at words outside of the Quran and look at the dictionary, you look at the word is in the Quran, and you look at a grammarian who knows the Arabic, who takes these Quranic words that are in the Quran and give you the definite the translation, because if he's going to translate that word into another language, he has to know the language that he's going to translate into, and he has to translate that word properly into that language. So he's going to translate it. So you go to a dictionary as an English-speaking person like myself, and say, well, let me see Arabic English dictionary. So how did they take that word in Arabic and translate it to my word in English? I want to make sure that they get that word right, because I'm just sitting here looking at English, you see? So I look, and then when I do that, I go back in the Quran now and see how the word is used out throughout the Quran in context. And I said, oh, they got it right. You see, the translator translated it right because I see the context is given that same meaning throughout the Quran. So when I look in the Quran, and the dictionary of the Quran, uh, the glossary of the Quran, Salah, Salah, Sud Lamb Aleph. Salah. It means to hurt in the back or the small of the back. And sud lam ya for sud lam wow to have the center of the back bent or as a more uh, 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 as uh, pronounced as sud lam salat, pronounced as sometimes written sud lam ya ta plural salawat, they translate as a prayer. So they have now taken that word to morph it right into a prayer. Now, if you look in chapter 22, verse 40, the word sud lam wow with the ta means synagogues. Synagogues. And so now they say synagogues, and another translator will say no, oratories, oratories, so I said, synagogue, what's going on in the synagogue? And what is going on in the oratories? And what is oration? It means speaking, people are speaking. So what are you doing in there? People are speaking, and you are listening, and you should be following closely to what's being said. I mean, you're going to get back to that root word of following closely when somebody's speaking, somebody's uh, speaking about something, like when you come to Salah, Know what you're being said, what's being said, and one thing after the other. So anyway, that's what's going on there. Now, when you look at chapter uh, six, like I said, six, 163, you're going to see the word salat, sadlam ya. Now, we said to roast, sadlam ya to roast, and sad uh, uh, to undergo roasting on a fire. Now, if you look in Lane's Lexicon, Volume 4, page 1720, you're going to see Sud Lamb Wow. It means, I struck or beat that part of him, of the back of him, which is called Sud Lamb. Sud Lamb. Sud Lamb. And then you're going to see a def another definition Sud Lamb Lamb Yah. He prayed, supplicated, petitioned, he performed a divinely appointed act. A uh, prayer, a prayer commonly termed as salat, a salawat, hence in the Quran, chapter 9, verse 103, and pray for them, uh, uh, your prayer for them is a benefit of whatever we're going to talk about them. So now he's saying, uh, this definition in, in the verse in the Quran is saying, where Allah talks about it, 9, 103, that the prophet should pray for them and his salat for them is a benefit. Now, again, I used to say to people, I said, well, I've never heard in all the 50 years that I'm Muslim, nobody ever said, brother, are you going to the mosque? No, I can't make it today. Uh, oh, brother, it's a shame. Well, I said, well, meanwhile, you're going, salah for me. Can you salah for me? I've never heard anybody ask anybody on the planet Earth to salah for them. Make dua for me, yes, but salah for them. However, we're going to discuss this verse where Allah says, salah for them. So, is it pray for them? We're going to see. Now, if you note in the Quran, chapter 22, verse 40, the plural, salawatun, means places of worship of the Jews. 
in chapter 22, verse 40, is places of worship for the Jews, synagogues. Synagogues, places of worship for the Jews. Now, word changes. So I just showed uh, this book here, which was printed. It's Hadith literature. Uh, its origin developed special features and criticism. It was printed in 1961. And I made it clear that I had nothing to do with it because uh, I was acting a fool at that time. <laughs> I was not Muslim. So I had nothing to do with this. And here's what he says about, about certain words, morphins, that were words changing. He said, the general connotation of the word hadith has, like that of many other words, for example, salat, sujud, ruku, zakat, etc., have been changed under the far-reaching influences of Islam. Under the far-reaching influences of Islam. So, this is what's said by this writer who was criticizing Hadith literature and one thing after the other in 1961. Those words have been changed. They have morphed into something else as Islam spread from one region of the world to the other. So now, we know that words are important. In chapter 10, verse 82, Allah says, He will establish the truth to be the truth by His words though the guilty people be adverse. So words are important. So when you start changing words and making them morph into something else, you, you're, especially when you're talking about the Quran, uh, you're going to have a problem because these words are important. They have to have their original meaning, what they mean. You can't have some uh, morphed word that comes into something else. You can't take ibadah, which is to serve uh, or... Uh, and call it uh, worship. Worship. You can't take Iman, which is to, to trust something, and call it belief. You can't make those words morph like that. So Allah will accept the truth to be the truth by his words, though the guilty be adverse, chapter 10, verse 82, and chapter 18, verse 27, and recite that which is revealed to you of your Lord, from your Lord, and the word is Uhiya there, Uhiya, which is revealed, we know that's in 619 that this Quran has been revealed. Recite that which has been revealed to you uh, uh, of the book of thy Lord. There is none who can alter his words. None can change the purpose of his words. Li kalimatihi. Li. Nobody can change his words and nobody can change the purpose of the word. So you can change the word or you can leave the word there and change the purpose of it. The meaning of it. So nobody can't do that. When you do that and you try to do that in the Quran, the Quran is going to, in context and doing the test read and so on, you're going to see over here, you're going to get caught over here. So if you're saying it's prayer over here and then over here is commitment or following closely or some other kind of thing, you're going to see, well, how did it change like that from prayer to blessing to synagogue to whatever. What according to the Quran, the Quran is the meaning of the term salah? Salah. Now, Sadlam Ya 87.15. 87.15. He indeed is successful who purifies himself. Now, we were talking about earlier, Zakat. And, oh, that's what I wanted to say before, also. Uh, I'm speaking on this uh, videotape right now, but prior to that, for about an hour or so, we had an open discussion, and everybody was talking about the video and what they had gleaned and understanding from the video, and we took all notes of that. We cross-examined and questioned each other, and so it was agreed that now we would do that off camera so we could just get, get speak freely, but now I'm presenting what I'm presenting on the camera, so it doesn't look like I'm just, just I'm the only one you know, running the show here. I'm not running anything. It's just my presentation. We thought it would be better to film it, and we thought not to have the other because if you want to, sometimes you want to see something happen, and you see you got commercials, you say, wow, they got so many commercials. So I'm saying you might look at that like, well, I want to see this guy. I came to see this show. You go to see, Beyonce, is, is on the, you don't want to see all these other people. 
Look, man, when's she gonna come on? Well, she's gonna come on for another two hours. What? I just came here to see her, you see? So we, made, we wanted to make it so that anybody who was watching the video, who didn't have the time to sit and all that, they would get to this point, although I had originally suggested that we do a part one, part two, and then put other people's conversation on. But anyway, this is the way it turned out. But that was the thing I wanted to speak about before. So now, chapter 87, verse 15, but verse 14 be begins, he indeed is successful who purifies himself. And the word there is zakah. 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 And remembers the law, remembers the names of the name of the law, and then what? Pasadla. So they say, and then he prays. He purifies himself and then remembers the name of the law, and then he prays. Now let's look at this word here. Purify because people are thinking that this is the person who goes and make the ritual wudu that they're talking about. They make the wudu or the guzzle, whatever he has to take before it's necessary for a full bath. And then he comes to the musala or the prayer rug or whatever, and then he makes the ritual prayer. But let's look at this word zakah, he who purifies himself. Let's take a look in chapter 24, verse 21. 24, verse 21. See how that word is used there. 2421. Oh, you who believe, follow not the footsteps of the devil. And whoever follows the footsteps of the, of the devil, surely he uh, commands indecency and evil. And were it not for Allah's grace upon you and his mercy, not one of you would have ever been pure. Here's the word zakah. You would not have been pure if it was not for Allah's mercy and grace upon you. Not one of you. But Allah purifies whom he pleases, and Allah is here and known. So, you know, it's not that you went out in a rainstorm or something, and you got, you met, got some physical woo-woo like that, and said, wow, we ain't got no water or nothing. So Allah let the rain come, and you go out there, and you got washed down like that. That's not the kind of thing Allah talking about. So it's not your physical wudu and guzzle like that either. So Allah purifies when he pleases. Let's take another look. Look at uh, Pharaoh, chapter 79, verse 18. Let's see how the word was used with him. Pharaoh, 79, 18. And so we'll look at verse 17. Let's get a little context. Verse 17 says, Go to Pharaoh. Surely he, is, he has rebelled. Go, that's Moses and Aaron. Go to Pharaoh. Surely he has rebelled. And say, Will thou purify thyself? Tazakah. Would, here's the word again. Would you purify yourself? Would you feel about yourself? So we're thinking they are tell uh, Pharaoh to go and make wudu? Take a guzzle? No. What about the blind man in chapter 80, verse 3? Just going to use a few places where the word is used. And we're not using it for a ritual washing of any sort. Chapter 80, verse 3, starting in verse, uh, verse 1. He frowned and turned away. This is talking about the prophet. He frowned and turned away because the blind man came to him. And what would make thee know that he might purify himself? Here's the same word used there again. The kind. Purify himself. And it goes right on after that. Or be mindful so that the reminder should profit him. So he would purify himself. How did you know that by talking to him and giving him this information that he might be mindful now because this is the remembrance. The Quran is the remembrance that he might be mindful and purify himself. You see, make himself now uh, free from any idolatry, any uh, uh, belief that he had that was contrary to a strict sense of monotheism. How do you know that? Did you know that? But would you go to these other people who wasn't even concerned about that? So here we have that word used there. 
Now, if we look in chapter 92, verse 18, uh, 92, verse 18, let's see what that says here real quick. That'll be the last one. And we look at uh, start verse 17. It says, And away from it shall be kept the most faithful uh, to duty. This is about the hell and the punishment and all that. So the people who will be kept away from it are the people who are most faithful and the people who are, uh, are, are the dutiful ones. Who gives his wealth, purifying himself. He gives him what his wealth, purifying himself. Here's the same word. So now we see that it's not physical washing and all that, because it's your wealth now that's purifying you. You're spending your wealth and you're purifying yourself. So how are you doing that? Maybe it's because you are not being selfish and greedy and haughty, haughty, haughtily, or you're not the, uh, taking care of the orphan and the wayfarer and the needy, whatever. And so therefore, you're by doing that, you're getting rid of some of your own faults and your shames. Allah says good deeds take away bad deeds. So the more good deeds you do, the more bad deeds you get taken away from yourself. Wouldn't you be purifying yourself? Wouldn't you be cleansing, cleansing yourself? So you, that's just another form of that word being used there. So we can see that that word uh, is not a physical washing. Now we talked about 96.10, which I looked at. Uh, we'll look at it again. Verse 9 to 13, where the verb sublam ya is used. And we're thinking that that means to roast or to burn uh, 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 something. We're saying it means to turn towards, to follow closely. Just like the word sud lamb, a while, sud lamb, yeah. Has thou seen him who fits, forbids a servant when he prays? Seest thou if he is on the right way? Or he enjoins observance of duty? See if thou if he denies and turns back. Now, let's take a look at verse 11 where it says, See if thou if he is on the right way. If he's upon Al Huda. So now you're forbidding a servant when he's Salah. So that can't be something that could be just done in any way, any fashion. A person can be home in his house uh, doing Salah. So what if I'm on my job and I say, Excuse me, sir, uh, it's, I'm Muslim, it's time for me to make my prayer. He says, You can't make no prayer here. We don't allow that. So you're forbidding me for, for making prayer? I can say, well, it's my lunchtime now. Uh, I'll be back in the whole time. I got half an hour. I'll go around the corner, around the street, and make my salon. So you ain't forbid me for nothing. That really has no meaning, you see. You have to for forbid me from doing something that I can't do. So now if it's in a system, a society where, like, they're banning Muslim, they're closing mosques, they're any, the head coverings and all that kind of stuff you're wearing out there, or whatever you might be doing that is Islamically orient orientated, and they're forbidding you. We don't want none of the Islam stuff here. We don't want nothing. You have to do. You, you have to do what we're telling you to do. You can't grow no beard. You can't take no time off. You can't. You have to wear this kind of dress when we. Uh, you work for us. We have to wear this. You can't wear them clothes like that. Whatever it is, now you're forbidding a servant when he's committed to following what the law has told him. You're forbidding him. So now you're hampering them. So he goes over here, he can't get hired, he can't get hired, and there's the rules and regulations, you put them in place and one thing after the other. But just take a look. If he's on the right path, he's on Al Huda. So let's take a look at chapter 20, verse 47. What about Pharaoh? Chapter 20, that word Al Huda. He's on Al Huda. Chapter 20, verse 47. When Moses and Aaron goes to Pharaoh, and they say, 47, So go to him and say to him, Surely we are two messengers of that Lord. So send forth the children of Israel with us, and torment them not. Indeed, we have brought thee a message from the Lord, of the, of the, from the Lord and peace be upon those who follow al Huda. So peace is on those who follow al Huda. So like when the person says you, 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That means nothing if you're not following Al Huda. Because in chapter 6, verse 54, chapter 6, verse 54, the messenger was told, when those who follow, who trust in our messages come to you, say salam alaikum. Say salam alaikum. And that's going to mean something. Why? Because you're following the message. So you trust that it will mean something. But Pharaoh, you went to him and said salam alaikum, but that's only on those who follow Al Huda. Now look what the next verse says. Instead of following Al Huda, look what happened. In 47, 48 it says, it is indeed been revealed to me that if that punishment will overtake him who rejects and turns away. There's the same words in, in, that's used in 75 uh, uh, verse uh, 31, 30, uh, uh, 31 and 32. Who kathabah wa You see, you give a lie to the truth and you turn away. So you can see right there. So now it says al Huda is definitely now connected with Salah. Because it, when you Salah, you, you rejected the truthful speech, and this is what Moses is coming with. He's coming with truthful speech, and you rejected it. And, 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 and that truthful speech has the, the, the weight of al Huda guidance for you, and you've given a lie and turn it away. You're doing the same thing right there, what the whole definition of Salah is. Follow me? So now, see if thou if he gives the lie and to Allah. <clears throat> now, we talked about 75, 31, 32, and the context of that, and we broke that down. I, th I think I need to go through that again. I went through that a little bit already. We just talked about Pharaoh. Now, let's look at the disbelievers in chapter 64, verse 6. The disbelievers in chapter 64, verse 6. Because we were talking about, <coughs> excuse me, giving a lie and turning away. The opposite of Salah, uh, following, committing yourself, and, and, and following. Now, if we look at chapter 64, verse 6. But the context takes you from verse 1 to uh, verse 10. The context 1 to 10. But let's take a look at it real quick. Verse 1, 64. Let me get there first before I read the wrong verse. <laughs> Whatever's in the heavens and the earth glorifies the law. His is the kingdom, and his is the praise. And he is possessed of power over all things. Verse 2. He that has created you, uh, but one of you is a disbeliever, and one of you is a believer, and the law is see of what you do. Verse 3. He created the heavens and the earth with truth, and he shaped you in the, and made you goodly uh, of your shape. Made goodly of your shape. And in, in him is your resort. And verse 4. He knows what is in the heavens and what is in the earth. And he knows what, is, what you hide and what you manifest. And the Lord doesn't know what is in the hearts. Verse 5. Has there not come to you the story of those who disbelieved before, then tasted the evil the consequences of their uh, conduct, and they had a painful chastisement? Verse 6. That is because there came to them their messages with clear arguments, but they said, Surely mortal, shall mortals guide us? So they disbelieved and turned away. Look what they did. You see? What did they do? They, instead of kathaba wa tawalla, they kafaru wa tawalla. So you can see it's the same kind of thing. Instead of a, they didn't follow, they didn't believe, they didn't trust, they were ungrateful, and they turned away. Over here they gave a lie to it, and they turned away. Here they are ungrateful, and they took one love when it came to them. So you can read the rest of that right on down. And the law is above all need, and the law is sufficient and praise. Now look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, And those who disbelieve and reject our messages, they are the uh, companions of the fire, abide therein, 
and evil is the result. So now the people who gave the lie and turned away, they are the disbelievers. And what did they do? They reject. They gave a lie to our messages. They reject the messages. They, re they disbelieve and they reject it. Kethaba. They reject it and Kethaba. And they are the companions of fire. They are their abide. So you can see now, again, that related to the root word of Salah is unbelief, giving a lie to the truth, rejecting the, the guidance, turning away from the guides, instead of following what is being brought to you, you are always in the negative. Who are those disbelievers? And, and who are those disbelievers? The people who disbelieve? We say to the people in 4012, when the Quran alone is mentioned, they cut the back. They cut the back. When the Quran is alone is mentioned, they disbelieve. Now, 9216, the rejectors of good, they do the same thing. The rejectors of good. And that context is 1 to 21. I won't read it all. Let's just look at verse 9 and verse 16. And that's chapter 92, verse 16. Okay. <clears throat> and reject what is good. They give the lie. Or cut the bar. Bil hasana. They reject what is good. And then the law talks about who reject the truth and turns away in verse 16. Elavi, those who cut the bar, watawala. They reject the truth and turn away. They give the lie. They reject what is good. They give the lie to what is hasana. And they reject the truth and turn away. So all throughout the Quran, Allah is using the opposite of, uh, of Salah as the people who are negative to the message. Always negative to the message. They don't want to follow the instructions of Allah. They don't want to do what Allah is commanding them to do. So this is always the opposite of Salah. So it's not a ritual prayer that they're concerned with here. Now, let's look at chapter 1. This is a new uh, approach to this uh, dismantling, this idea about ritual salah and so forth. <clears throat> new argument, chapter 1 of Surah 1, chapter 1, verse 5. Now, the Twelvers, or the people who are Shia, are awaiting the coming of uh, someone called Huja, Hujat Allah al-Mahdi, or the Redeemer of Islam. The Shia people are waiting for that person to come. The Sunnis are waiting for the Mahdi to come, and also the return of Jesus. The Sunni Muslims are waiting for him to come. And the Jews are awaiting the Messiah, Elias, and that prophet like Moses. They are waiting for him to come. And the Christians are awaiting the second coming of Jesus Christ. All these people are waiting because they're waiting for somebody to bring redemption to them. Yet the Muslims all day long are reciting the Quran, chapter five, uh, chapter 1, verse 5. It dina sarolta was the king. It did not guide us to Sarawatha was the king. So all these people are waiting for these guides who are going to come. The Shia for the Mahdi, uh, the Sunni for the Mahdi and Jesus, the Jews for the Messiah, the prophet like Moses and Elias, and the Christians for the return of Jesus, the Son of God, God incarnate. Now, <coughs> Al-Fatiha, the Jewish Dua, which I'm saying is a Jewish Dua, to be guided to the Sarawatha Muslim King. Al-Fatiha is a Jewish dua to be guided to the Sarawatha Muslim King. The Fatiha was not recited uh, by the Arabs. The people who recited the Fatiha were people who were monotheistic people. They start off by saying, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. That's not the pagan Arabs at the time when Muhammad was made messenger. He was the law himself, and the law guided him. And then he came to these pagan people who were the law. So they weren't the people who were saying, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. The Jewish people who had the Book of Moses and the Torah, and the law talks about them having 
received the guidance and all that. These were the people now who ex expected this prophet like Moses to come, and they were looking for that final, complete uh, form of guidance. So that will be talked about further in another issue about this idea about Sophia. So now, guide us the straight path. It is my contention that Muhammad never recited these words. It Dina Sarat the Muslim is my contention that Muhammad, the pro messenger prophet, never recited these words, it Dina Sarat the Muslim, making ritual salah a non starter. This reciting, it Dina Sarat the Muslim, never recited by the prophet, makes the ritual salah a non starter. Now, why? Because this is a request for divine guidance. Idina Sarotha was the king, and it has been answered. It has been answered. It has been answered. And before Muhammad got a chance to recite that, Allah says he was found, the law of Fada, and he guided him. And then we're going to show that he would never have recited it. And if he did recite it, if we just want to give you some leniency and say he did recite it, he recited it, he would only have recited it once. And anybody who ever recites it, only recites it one time in their life, if at all, and that's it. Now let's show why. In chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. Chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. Because you recited Edina Sarotha was the king, and Allah responded to you right away. He responded to your request, what you asked for. So now, to show you that it was not Muhammad, and it was the people of the book, who were Jews, and those Jews were not only just uh, the Israelites, the children of Israel, but and who called themselves Jews or uh, Israelites, but it was also those same children of Israel who called themselves Christians. They were all, the Christians, all of them were Jews. They were all following the Torah and the law of Moses, and, uh, and until also that the, uh, the Injil was revealed. The Injil was revealed. Before that was the book of Moses. Now look, here's what it says. O people of the book, indeed our, messengers, uh, our messenger has come to you, making clear to you that uh, much of that which you conceal of the book and passing over much. Indeed there has come to you from a law a light and a clear book. A light, which is uh, singular in, in its definition, nor is, is singular, and a clear book. Whereby with that book, that singular book, Allah guides such as follows his pleasures in the ways of peace, brings them up, uh, 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 now that's why we said, peace be on those who follow al Huda. That's what we said to what, what Moses had told Pharaoh. So he guides them into the way of peace, brings them from darkness into light, from darkness into light, and guides them to the Sarotha the King. And he guides them to the Sarotha the King. He guides them to the Sarotha Mustaqim. So when you said Idina Sarotha Mustaqim, this is your method of getting that guidance to the Sarotha Mustaqim with a single source. Light is one source. Light is not plural. Darkness is plural. It brings them out of dark, darkness, which is multifaceted, multi, multifaceted. It could be on any kind of darkness, ignorance, foolishness, or whatever, any means, but one source, which is light. Light is always singular. And Sarat is singular. Sarat is not paths. Sarat is always singular. Sarat the Muslim King is singular, one path. And he guides them with the book into the Sarat the Muslim King. Okay, now, chapter 17, verse 9. Chapter 17, verse 9. Let's see about whether somebody needs to ask a Dean of Sarat the Muslim King. You don't have to ask anymore. You have that guidance. 17, verse 9. Would the prophet stand every day uh, in five prayers 17 times or more and say, It Dina Sarat the Mustaqim, when Allah says, We gave you a light and a clear book and God you Sarat the Mustaqim? 17 verse 9. Surely this Quran, this the Quran, guides to that which is most up upright. And give good news to the believers who do good that there's a great reward. So this Quran, this Quran, in that Hada El Quran, this Quran, Yahdi, is guiding 
to what? Aquam. That's the that's the comparative form of what you ask for. It's, it's not more which is more upright. It's more upright. More upright. Most upright. More upright. And guides to the straight path. Now, again, in 6, 162. This is why now you have the Quran. This Quran guides to which is more upright. Why would you keep asking if then a Surah the Mustaqim? What are you looking for? Are you looking for the Mahdi to come to guide you? The return of Jesus to come and guide you? Who are you looking for to come as a guide when you have this guide to see? Chapter 6, verse 162. Let's see if the prophet would have said, Edina Sarotha was the king. Five times a day in Salah, 17 times or more, and with all the, uh, the uh, Nawakul prayers and the Sunnah prayers and all of these, every time reciting Edina Sarotha was the king, why would he constantly be saying that? The people would ask him, excuse me, why do you keep saying that when you have these verses saying that you have been guided, you, so forth? So now even you yourself are saying that. Look, chapter 6, verse 162. As for me, this is what the prophet is saying. As for me, I don't know about you guys, what you feel about yourself. But as for me, this is the way I feel. As for me, my Lord has what? Guided. He says, guided. It's already happened. Not guide me. He's already guided me. Where? To the Saraltham was the king. A right dean. The, the millet of Abraham the uh, upright one, and he was not of the Muslim king. So as for me, the prophet is saying, my Lord has guided me. So if he's saying, my Lord has guided me, why would he be saying in Salah all day long, it dina sirotha king, guide me to sirotha king. What's wrong with him? Something would have to be wrong. Excuse me, why do you keep asking for guidance when you just said you were guided? You just told us, the revelation says, this book guides. You just said the Quran guides. Well, let's keep looking further, because this is not making sense that he would say, Edina Sarotha was the king. This is making your ritual prayer moot. It's a non-starter. If he's already been guided, he will not be saying that. And I'm saying he never said it. So let's take a look at 4343. 4343. 4343. And let's this, this, this look at the start at verse 40. Canst thou make the, the deaf to hear or guide the blind and him who is in, uh, in clear error? So if, if we take thee away, still we shall ex, 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 exact retribution from them. Or we shall show thee that which we promised them. So if we cause you to die, no matter, we're still going to get them. Or if we allow you to be right here and we show you uh, what, what we promised them. Surely we uh, possess the power of all things. Now verse 43 says, So hold fast to that which is revealed to thee. Surely thou art on the Sarotha was the king. Look at that. So hold fast to that which is revealed to you. Surely you are on Sarotha was the king. Allah has guided you, you see. That's the perfect verse. To the Sarotha Mustaqim. Allah has guided you to the perfect to the Sarotha Mustaqim. So hold fast to that. Why would he be asking if Dina Sarotha Mustaqim? Allah has guided you. You said Allah has guided me. Allah said the book is the guidance. Let's see. Now, what is so much about this Sarotha Mustaqim? Let's take a look at 1156. Why is the Sarotha Mustaqim so important? 11.56 Surely I put my trust in the law, my Lord and your Lord. There is no living creature, but he grasps it, it by his forelocks. Surely my Lord is on the Sarotha Mustaqim. Surely my Lord is on the Sarotha Mustaqim. So my Lord has guided me to Sarotha Mustaqim. This Quran guides to the Sarotha Mustaqim. The book guides to the Sarotha Mustaqim. Why would the prophet be still asking if Dino Sarotha was the king? It's insanity. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Let's 
Okay, let's look at chapter 23, verse 73. 2373. 2373. <coughs> we'll look at verse 72 first. Or, verse 72, 2372. Or does not ask them a, re a recompense. You ask them for something in substitute for this message. But the recompense of, uh, uh, of that Lord is best, and He is the best. To provide. He's the best of, of providers. Verse 73. And surely thou calleth them to the right way. You calling them Elasarotha was the king. Surely you are calling them to the Sarotha was the king. So if you're calling them to the Sarotha was the king, and you have been guided to the Sarotha was the king, how are you asking to be guided to the Sarotha was the king? It doesn't make sense. He could never stand and make that prayer every day like that. He could never make that prayer every day like that. So whoever's making this ritual prayer, and the fatia must be said in every rakat that you tell us, this is wrong. You can't be asking Allah for something he's already given you. That's disrespect. You're disrespecting the law, or you're doubting that the law gave you that at all. You don't believe that you're guided. Okay? Forty-two fifty-two. Forty-two fifty-two. Forty-two fifty-two. Look at uh, fifty-one. And it's not it's not about Satan. Uh, to a mortal, the Lord should speak to him except by revelation or from behind a veil, a veil, or by sending a messenger and revealing his, by his permission what he pleases. <coughs> These are the three forms of revelation that we spoke about over and over again. And then it says, Surely he is the high, El Kabir the wise. And thus did we reveal to thee an inspired book. By our command. Now, this is why I say that he never would have recited the Fatiha. Look what it says right here. We reveal to you by revelation a book by our, a, a, a revealed book by our command. Thou knowest not what the book was. You didn't know what the book was, any aspect of it. Nor what to trust. You didn't know what to put your trust in. You didn't know. That's why we found you the law of chapter 93, verse 7. We found you the law because you didn't know. But we made it, the book, it a light. It a single thing, light a single thing. Guiding thereby whom we please of our servants. And surely thou guidest to the right path. You're guiding with the book to the right path. How are you guiding to the right path with the revelation that we gave you and you still there asking for guidance? Well, you want more revelation? You want some supplement revelation? You want something else? Why are you asking that? Why are the Muslims having themselves asked for guidance every day when you have the guidance? After reading these clear verses of the Quran, how could any Muslim believe, a believer entertain that the idea that Muhammad, the messenger prophet, stood before Allah requesting guidance 17 times or more a day? Let me repeat. After reading these clear verses of the Quran, how can any Muslim believer, Muslim or believer, a Muslim or believer, entertain the idea that Muhammad, the messenger prophet, stood before Allah requesting guidance 17 times or more a day? Now, as a sidebar, Allah condemns ritual salah. Allah condemns ritual salah. In chapter 8, verse 35, Chapter 8, verse 35. Allah condemns ritual salah. <clears throat> there Allah says, Their salah, their salah at the house is nothing but whistling and clapping of hands, tasting the chastisement of the fire because you disbelieve.
Allah condemns ritual salah. Quran 835, and their prayer, their salah at the house is nothing but whistling and clapping of hands, tasting the chastisement of the fire because you disbelieve. So this is a ritual that you're doing. Your salah at the house is nothing every time you show up ritually, ritually, as a ritual, but whistling and clapping hands. That's your salah. It's a ritual and Allah condemns that. Now, Let's look at another aspect of this argument. The word sajada. 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 And I said earlier during the off-camera discussion that this argument is defeated by just one word. That this sajda is a physical prostration. It's defeated by one word, and that word is ra'a. Ra'a. Ra'alif. ra fata alif fata Ra'a. And that word means to see, to see. Now, you remember Shakespeare, the Shakespeare had a poem or some recital that said to be or not to be, that is the question. To be or not to be, that is the question. I'm saying the Quran has a recital also to see or not to see, that is the question. What verse? Huh? What verse is to see and not to see? Where are we at now? We're looking at the word sajada. Oh, sajada. Yes, sajada. To be or not to be, that is the question. I'm saying no. For us, to see or not to see, that is the question. <laughs> <coughs> sajada. To submit oneself in adoration. To or for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. This is what I'm seeing, the definition of sajada, when I look at the Quranic explanation of the word. To submit oneself in adoration to or for Allah, the Lord of the world. Not a ritual, ritual physical prostration. Not a ritual physical prostration. Now see. Now we're saying C, but before we say C, let's see you don't see. Before we see, let's see you don't see. Chapter 8, verse 50. Let's see what you don't see. Chapter 8, verse 50. Chapter 8, verse 50. And if thou couldest see, when the angel caused to die those who, who disbelieved, smiting their faces and their backs, and saying, Taste ye the punishment of burning. Allah says, if you could see that, that means you can't see it. Allah says, if you could see, that means you can't see it. You can't see that. Chapter 6, verse 27. Here's Allah telling you that if you could see it, how terrible that situation would be. So as a result, he doesn't let you see it. Chapter 6, verse 27. And if thou could see, when they are made to stand before the fire and say, Would that we were sent back, would we would not be the rejectors of the we would not reject the messages of our Lord, and we would be believers. Look at that. We will not reject the messages, not the prophets, not the messengers. It's the messages that we're, being, we're concerned with. We wouldn't reject the messages. They're right there before the fire. They've been condemned. They know why they've been condemned. It's not because they didn't believe in the prophet. They didn't follow the sunnah. They didn't follow uh, uh, the mathabs. Not because they didn't uh, obey the messenger. It's because they didn't follow the messages. All of us sent us a messenger so we can follow the messages. So they didn't do that. Now, another one and the last one of that, if they could see, 3212. Thirty-two twelve, And couldest thou but see the guilty hang their heads before their Lord. Our Lord, we have seen and heard. Send us back 
that we would do, that we will do good, we are now certain. Now look at this verse. This verse is saying, if you could see when they hang their heads, because now they're saying, now we see. We see now, and we have we have heard. Send us back, send us back now, and we will be certain. We will be certain because now you see. Why? You, because you, uh, you're certain now. So now, that's the if you can see. Let's see about the ones you can see. You see, that the ones you can see. Like I was debating this guy, Dr. Jack Evans, and we were talking about the lost books of the Bible. And he says, Mr. Malik is so concerned about the lost books, he should be concerned about the found books. The found books. And I said, wow, look at him. He's trying to, he's trying to get smart. He should don't worry about the lost book, but the found book. So we're saying, don't worry about the books, what you can't see. Let's see what you can see. Let's talk about the things you can see. So this is what we're concerned with here now. Can we see? To see or see not? Can we see the prostration of all those who are in the heavens and the earth? Can we see that? Let's look at chapter 55. Well, before we do that, let's take a look at something else. Chapter 17, verse 44. 1744. 1744. The seven heavens and the earth and those in them declare his glory. And there is not a single thing in the and, and that glorifies but glory but not a single thing but glorifies him with his, with his praise, but you do not understand their glorification. You don't understand their glorification. That's their taspi. That's their taspi. You don't understand their taspi, the glorification, you see? Their glorification. You don't understand that. But everything does the taspi. You don't understand it. Now, look at chapter 24, verse 41. Twenty-four forty-one. Here we start right out. See if thou not. You see? Alam Torah. Here's our word again. See if thou not. Don't you see that? That Allah is, it is to Allah whom do glorify all those who are in the heavens and the earth. They all, all those in the heaven and the earth, they do the tasbih to Allah. And the birds with their wings outspread. Each one knows its salah and its glorification. And Allah is known of what they do. Now look what happens here. We just said that they do the tasbih, but you don't know their tasbih. But Allah is saying that you see the tasbih, but you don't know what it is. But here Allah is saying you see their salah also. He didn't say you don't know their salah. He said you don't know their tasbih. The salah you know. You know the salah. It's not the tasbih that you don't know. That's what it is. You know the salah. Now, so let's take a look again. Salah we know, tasbih we don't know. 55, 3 to 7. 55, 3 to 7. Fifty five, three to 7. He created man, taught him expression. The sun and the moon follow a reckoning, and the herbs and the trees adore him. And the heavens he raised high, and he set he, he sets up the measure. So the heaven the 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 uh, the herbs the herbs of oh, they get herbs here, but some people translate it as stars, stars and trees. But he just translates as the herbs and the trees. They adore him. What they do? They sajada. You see, yes, Judah, yes, Judan. 
Yes, you then. They, they do the sajda. They all submit in adoration, I'm saying, for Allah, yet none physically prostrate themselves to Him. None physically pr prostrate themselves to Him. Now, in chapter 12, verse 4, chapter 12, verse 4, Chapter 12, verse 4. When Joseph said to his father, O oh my father, I saw, Ra'ai too, I saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon, I saw them making obeisance, which they say is prostration to me. Li Sajidi, Li Sajidi. I saw them seven stars and the moon and the sun and the moon. I saw them making such a to me. Can you imagine? You think he saw the sun and the moon and the stars doing a bending, breaking, and doing something? What, what, did, what did he see them doing to him? How could you know that they were doing that to you from that distance like that? This is not what we're questioning. The idea is that this is what you said. Wait, me, the sun is 93 million miles away, they tell us. Yet you saw it making subject to you. How do you know it was the guy next to you? It was standing right next to you? Was anybody next to you? How do you know it was to that guy? Or the guy behind you? Or the guy right in the, you know, that's a long perimeter you can cover. Meanwhile, that's not the point. The point is that he saw that. To see or not to see, that's what we're talking about. So he saw that. Now, let's take a look. That's 1648 to 50. 1648 to 50. See they not? Don't you see? Allah said, don't you see? To see or not to see? You see. We, Allah told you that you can't see that. Wish you, you wish you could see that. This now you see. See they not? Have they not seen? That everything Allah has created, its shadows return from right to left, Making obeisance or prostration, sujadan, 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 for Allah, while they are in utter abasement, abasement. Don't you see that? That the shadows, even your shadows, from right to left, are making sujda, and for Allah, makes sujda. Prostration, whatever creature that is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth, and the angels, and they are not proud. 49, 50, they fear their Lord above them and do what they are commanded. What are they commanded? To subject, to do the subject. Now, the question is, has anyone seen the shadows physically falling down, making prostration? Have they submitted in obedience to a law? Which one has is the situation in? Has anybody seen that? Allah says, see they not. Don't you see that? Quran chapter 22, verse chapter 22 verse 18 do not do not you see see you not that to Allah makes submission sajjada sajjudu sajjudu do you not see that to Allah makes submission submission whoever is in the heavens and whoever is in the earth whoever is in the heaven and whoever is in the earth is doing the sajjada and the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and the mountains, and the trees, and the animals moving, and uh, uh, any moving creature. And what? And what? Many of the people. Many of the people. And many they are 
to whom chastisement is, is due. And he whom Allah abases, none can give him honor. Uh, uh, honor. Surely Allah does what he pleases. So now, here we are. Allah is saying, don't you see the sun, the moon, the stars, and all that? And many of the people. Now he's putting people in it for the first time. They're all in the same group. So whatever the people are doing, you see them. You see the other things doing the same thing. Whatever you see the people doing, they're doing the same thing that the sun, moon, the stars, and the trees, and all are doing the same thing. The same sajda that they're doing is the same sajda. Do you follow? Special note. The word see you not, the word see you not is an indication that the prostration of those who are in the those who are in the heavens and the earth, of the moon, the sun, the stars, the mountain, the trees, the moving creatures, and many of the people are visible and the same. They're visible and the same. If our prostration is physical and falling down, then by logic, the prostration of all others should also be physical and falling down. But why are we unable to see the prostration of all others when Allah says that you can see them? Why are you not able to see them when Allah says you can see them? Do we have defective eyesight? Or are the words of Allah not true so that we don't see the visible? The answer is simple. We are unable to see the prostration only because the prostration of all those mentioned, including mankind, is not physical, but a prostration of submission and surrender. Each creation of Allah has surrendered to his will and obeys the command and never fails in his duties and assigned, that are assigned by Allah. Do you understand that? You see how clear that became now? For the first time now you have the human beings involved. Whatever the human beings are doing, the rest of the creation, you see the same thing. Nobody can escape that situation. Now, I think here, I just want to introduce one more thing and I'll be done with this for now. And this, I have other things, but I'll cut them short. This thing I want to say is uh, concerning the traditionalist. The traditionalist. And that Allah condemns anybody who is following tradition. Allah condemns them. The, respons the responsibility of the act of a human being is determined by his uh, own volition and intent. So much so that if one is forced, if one is forced to believe something or is prevailed upon with force and compulsion against his will to act in a particular manner, he would not be held responsible for such belief or action. For a man of trust is the other name for full conviction, says the Quran. There is no compulsion in the deen. This, very, this verse deals with two aspects of religious freedom. And I'm using religious, the term religious uh, uh, loosely. This verse deals with two aspects of religious freedom. The first aspect is the freedom of the Muslim individual in his religious thinking and in his understanding of the tenets and ideas of his religion without emphasis from society or from the state, without being exposed on account of his religious views to harm or to his person, property, or occupation. The second is freedom of the non-Muslim living in the Islamic society to live his own religious life. No compulsion in deen. To worship in the manner prescribed by his life in accordance with the directions of that religion without interference or harm to his interests or to his uh, place of worship. And in another place the law says, and say the truth is from your Lord, so let you, uh, him who please believe and let him please who dis, uh, disbelieve. Physical compulsion and mental coercion apart, apart from anything agreed to or followed traditionally Listen to this now. Physical compulsion and mental coercion apart, apart, apart 
anything agreed to or followed traditionally or conventionally conforming to the established practice conforming to the established uh, practice or accepted standards and not after due exercise of reason and intellect cannot be termed as Iman. Accepting anything traditionally is according to the Quran the way of the unbeliever. Accepting anything traditionally is according to the Quran the way of the unbeliever. Let's take a look. Chapter 2 verse 170. Chapter 2, verse 170. <clears throat> and when it is said to them, to the unbelievers, when it is said to them, follow what Allah has revealed. Follow what Allah has revealed. They say, nay. We follow that wherein we found our fathers. What? Even though their fathers had no sense? nor did they follow, follow the right path. The believers, on the other hand, are those who, in chapter 25, verse 73, who when the messages of the, the, their Lord is presented to them, they fall not down there at deaf, dumb, and blind. So, the word for religion in the Quran, from what I understand, is called Shia. Shia, like what the Shia call themselves. Shia. Shia. The Quran says that those who follow a way of life marred by ritual prayer and worship belong to a Shia, a Shia, or religions. Those committed to religions are termed idol worshippers, Mushri king. Chapter 30, verse 32 to 33. Let's take a look. I intend to go into this kind of discussion further in the coming days, inshallah, with an individual uh, presentations. So, chapter 30, verse 32 to 33. of those who split up their religion and become parties. That word there is Shia, Shia, Shia'an. Shia'an, Shia'an. They became Shia. Those who split up their religion and became parties. Every sect rejoicing in that which is with it. 33. And when harm afflicts them, they call upon their Lord, turning to him. Then when he makes them to taste the mercy from him, lo, some of them become associates, begin to associate, rather, with their Lord. So they become mushriks. You follow me? Mm -hmm. they, became, they, they split up their deen. Allah says, man was one uh, community, chapter 2, verse 13, 2, 13. And then they divided themselves into different religions now. They were a deen. Then they became Shia, religions, you see. And each one rejoicing is what with, with, with them. So they followed this way of life marked by ritual prayer and worship. Idol worshippers. So Allah said they became mushriks. Now if you look at chapter 2, verse 170. Two, verse 170. I'm almost done now, but only a couple of minutes. 2 verse 170. And when it is said to those, and when it is said to them, follow what Allah has revealed, they say, Nay, we follow that where we found our fathers. What? Even though their fathers had no sense at all, know where they follow of the right way. So they want to follow traditions, you see? Mm -hmm. They want to follow tradition. 43, 21 to 24. 43, 21 to 24. Or... 
Have we given them a vote before it so that they hold fast to it? Nay, they say, we found our fathers on a course, and surely we are guided by their footsteps. And thus do we, and thus we sent not before them a warner in a town, but the, the wealthy among them said, surely we found our fathers following a religion, and we are followers of their footsteps. So they want to follow the footsteps of what they found, the traditions, the, the traditional uh, ancestors doing. And lastly, chapter 39, verse 1 to 4. So Allah condemned that traditional worship, following. 39, 1 to 4. The revelation of the book from Allah the mighty the wise is from Allah the mighty the wise. Surely we have revealed to thee the book with truth to serve Allah, being sincere to him in obedience in your deen. Now surely sincere obedience is due to Allah alone. And those who choose protectors besides him say, why did we choose them? Why, why are we doing this with our ancestors and all that? They say, we serve them only that they may bring us nearer to the Allah, to you, to Allah. Surely Allah will judge between them on that uh, and that wherein they differ. Surely Allah guides not him who is a liar, ungrateful. Now look at this. This is what they're saying. They're saying we should we serve them that bring them the, that they may bring us near to you. That's nothing in the Quran like that. So they went outside the Quran to get that information. So Allah says, I will judge between them wherein they differ. So now we said before, when you differ by staying inside the Quran, you, you're safe. But these people now are going to be judged, and they went outside the Quran. And they said, we, we, we're doing this shirt because these people are helping us get nearer to you. Like on the day, on the day of judgment, they said, Lea Allah, we were not of the Mushrikeen. Send us back, we won't do that anymore. So now, verse 4, so Allah says, If Allah desired to take a God, a son, to himself, he could have chosen, chosen among uh, uh, whom he pleased from among the, out, those out of whom he cr created. Glory be to him, Allah is the one, the subdue of all. In other words, the point is that when you're making a partner with Allah, it's the same as giving Allah a son. Anytime you make a partner with Allah, you're giving Allah a son. You're giving them a helper. You know, the, you know, you, the, man has procreated so that his lineage carry on, that he can have helpers, he can have a society, one thing after the other. Allah is alone by himself. He doesn't need anybody to support him. He's self-sufficient. When you give him an associate, it's like giving him a son. So this is the conclusion of what I say for right now is reason to reject this idea of ritual salah and of uh, uh, physical prostration and sujood and all this whole business. Any questions from anybody? I know it's in that verse where it says, I mean, they indict themselves, they say, we serve them. And Excuse Allah me? say, where, where it says we serve them. When Allah says serve him alone, he created man to serve him. To serve but him, they yeah. saying, they saying, here, we serve them. Yeah. The traditional, yeah. the ancestors. Yeah. Can I, can now, can I copy this? Can, can one I, other point I just want to point out. This is a picture somebody took back when I used to give the classes in comparative religion. And this was at the Masjid of Fatima about 20 some years ago. This is me standing there in ritual salah. I've made Hajj. I made Hajj in 1972. This is a ritual salah that I'm standing here. Now, I brought this and I showed it earlier. This is a prayer rug that I bought early in my conversion to Islam, what I thought was Islam. And I was a businessman. I wanted to be a little outstanding, so I went to a Persian rug dealer, and I bought an original prayer rug. The guy told me this is original, handmade, and it was made with a, a, a defect in it, a mistake in it. Some of the, some, something in it was designed wrong to show that only a law is perfect. So I made Salah on this rug for over 30 years, and this is what the rug looked like when I finished with it. When I finished praying on it. This is where I was standing down there. So anybody want to tell me about ritual prayer, I know about ritual prayer. And I can tell you that it did nothing for me to, to make me not do shameful and evil deeds. 
Ritual prayer did not make prevent me, make it impossible for me to do shameful and evil deeds. I confess up, I did shameful and evil deeds. It's only by following this Quran by itself makes it impossible for me to do shameful and evil deeds. Anybody, anybody who does that, same case. Hmm. So I know I've been there and done that. Any other questions? Mm, no, I think we're good. That's it. <laughs>